everyone welcome to medical dialogues show i am dr nandita mohan and today i'm going to talk about a very interesting topic that have carved out much research in the recent times we will be talking about not none other than the status of hiv in india now to give us more insights into the recent developments in this field we have with us today dr ishwar gilada who is an hiv specialist having experience of 43 years the president emeritus of the aids society of india and also the member of the governing council at the international aids society welcome to medical dialogue sir it's really a pleasure to be interviewing you today here thank you thank you so primarily sir it is a known fact we all know that an early diagnosis of a positive hiv a uh, patient status helps prevent and also significantly delay the morbid conditions that have been associated with hiv or aids uh, and over 90% of those infected with this virus are actually not aware of their status so what is your say in it see basically um, when you talk about hiv there are two things one is uh, how many people with hiv will lead to aids aids is a stage where a person getting lot of symptoms internal diseases or some type of secondary cancer so secondary opportunistic infections and cancer when you get then it is called aids otherwise it is only hiv he or she is only hiv positive or hiv infected now uh, currently in india we are estimating around 2.4 to 2.5 million infections that is 24 lakh to 25 lakh out of which almost uh, 78% people are aware about their status another 15 to 20% people they do not know their status that figure could be little bit smaller or bigger because is the estimate so people who are not aware about their status despite being infected they they can be low risk people they can be high risk people they can be widows where husband has died couple of years before and widow doesn't know about her status or people who would, don't want to get tested because of uh, shame disguise or some kind of uh, uh, ill treatment meted out to the social, by the society to such people so we need to dig them out otherwise you know they will continue to spread the infection they will continue to suffer and such kind of people are more likely to get aids and die otherwise those people who are hiv positive and if they are under brought under treatment currently the treatment is so nice that after 2 to 3 months of treatment that infected person becomes undetectable for viral load and undetectable means untransmittable so a hiv positive person who has been treated for 2 to 3 months and continue to get treatment that person becomes totally a viral or undetectable for virus zero virus though the antibody test will be positive and that person cannot transmit infection to the spouse sex partner or if the spouse is a female and she is pregnant she cannot pass on the infection to the child secondly they live a full normal life Uh, they don't have to be hospitalized because of hiv they don't have to compromise anything in their life because of hiv like social life or personal life or professional life or financial life nothing is compromised so and they live a full normal life as if somebody is hiv infected so in india the average age of a male is around 71 and average age of age of a female is around 73 so when you are born we are born with that kind of age which is called age at birth and a hiv positive person despite being positive at age 25 or 30 can still live up to 71 or 73 years of average life that means your life is not reduced you do not transmit hiv to other partner you do not uh, get hospitalized because of hiv and you do not compromise anything in your life because of hiv and that's why hiv has become a very much chronic manageable disorder or man- chronic manageable infection we do not even call it this is now that's a wonderful development sir definitely recent developments have taken a good toll over the disease now uh, talking about now as we discussing the treatment aspect now if i could go in little bit in detail about the vaccines that have been recently developed so how do researchers actually address the challenges of uh, hiv's genetic diversity that is there and also the ability to evade the immune system in uh, the proper development of a vaccine you see uh... HIV vaccine had been first developed in 1989. They are all called candidate vaccine because nothing is available in commercial or for personal use market. So since 1989, when Jonas Salk, who invented the Salk vaccine for polio, the same person had invented the first uh, candidate vaccine for HIV. Since then till today, almost 99 candidate vaccines have been produced. 
and they have been tried and some vaccine have been tried at uh, animal level or in lab level or phase 1 or phase 2 trial in uh, all this 99 vaccine none of the vaccine is found successful except the two of uh, one was called vaxgen which was uh, tri- uh, 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 tried almost in the more than 5000 people phase 3 trial and even that vaccine could not found uh, more than 50% success rate and therefore it was decided not to provide vaccine to anybody but the platform which was used for the vaccine for uh, uh, production of hiv or hiv vaccine that is called rna platform that rna same platform was used for making a covid vaccine and there they have been successful so there have been mrna vaccine by two companies and there are other companies also making mrna vaccine but till today uh, the vaccine is not available for hiv it is currently not possible and maybe another 5 to 10 years will be required maybe more than that time is required to develop a proper vaccine which can be commercially or uh, uh, regularly utilized so uh, if you compare two different viruses like hiv and covid though we know that covid had a lot of variants and sub variants but in comparison with hiv we call a stable virus hiv is a unstable virus and in developing a vaccine against uh, hiv is difficult because the vaccine is very much formidable uh, if there are only two type of hiv hiv1 and 2 but in uh, hiv1 there is a b c d e so hiv1 a b c in india we have hiv1 c again c as a 1 2 3 so hiv1 c one in india so what happens is suppose you make a vaccine which works on a today the virus will change the shape to b you make ab which will change to c you make a to z all capital it will change to small a small b so in that sense the virus is uh, changing the shape more often than what we can make a vaccine and therefore till today there is no successful vaccine available for hiv that's actually a good uh, research point uh, that is much needed actually in this uh, uh, topic so uh, now coming to the next aspect uh, what role do you think the public health policies or even the community level engagements can play in the successful implementations of any hiv vaccination uh, program once the vaccine is developed now you telling that there is no vaccine as if now there is no nothing which has been developed so what role can public health policies play in the future development of vaccination see uh, there is something called a vaccine preparation uh, and preparation of the community who should receive the vaccine if and when vaccine is made available it will not be that given to everybody just like you have been giving uh, diphtheria pertussis and uh, tetanus or polio vaccine so almost 100% children are vaccinated so initially if at all the vaccine is made available and is successful it will be for those people who are in high risk behavior community and in that is male having sex with male people having multiple sexual partners or if one partner is positive other partner is negative then the negative partner should receive the vaccine among the marital or living in relationship so we need to decide uh, on the communities now once that community is decided who should receive the vaccine then they should be having a preparedness of their mindset that whether they should take the vaccine or not currently when uh, the why why the uh, vigor to find vaccine is not so much uh, today for hiv as much as it was 20 30 40 years back because hiv has a good management hiv has good medicines and there are n number of medicines like at least 25 30 medicines are there out of which you choose combination of two or three medicine and you treat and people are stable on that medicine for 10 years 15 years 20 years and even after the medicine doesn't work then you have other levels of medicine so when the medicines are available which are affordable and india has made it more affordable because currently 92% of the world's hiv positive people anywhere in the world they are taking medicine made from india and they are at pittance of the cost the cost of hiv management is much cheaper than cost of diabetes management so in that sense if medicine is available people are surviving longer they are not getting into any problem then how many people would take vaccine that is another issue secondly those people who are at risk of getting hiv also they have something called prep pre exposure prophylaxis that is again at very low cost available so uh, preventive medicine is available preventive vaccine is not available even if somebody is exposed to hiv 
had a uh, uh, just a sex with hiv positive person who had uh, millions of viruses in his body despite that within 48 hours if you treat that person with post exposure prophylaxis two drug combination or three drug combination that person doesn't get hiv so you can take preventive uh, treatment you can take post exposure treatment you do not get hiv so in that scenario i am not sure how many people would be interested in taking the vaccine and that's what is known to the community of scientists who know that there will not be much of demand and they put that thrust of making vaccine is not uh, seen so much uh, now as it was 20 or 30 years before but treatment was not easily available treatment was uh, not very affordable and treatment was toxic now the toxicity is also very low so in that sense the importance of vaccine is not much but if it all come then we need to prepare a community who should be taking the vaccine understood understood sir uh, so one more thing if you could just highlight uh, now that we talking about vaccines all, all, all uh, in detail uh, so are there any clinical trials uh, that are in lieu of uh, the development of vaccines or uh, are there any uh, recent research that has uh, come out and are there any clinical takeaways or any message that you would want to give out see firstly that the uh, viewers should understand uh, in any kind of vaccine or drug trial there are several layers of trial the first trial is is a proof of concept and that is done in the lab second trial is done in the animals so uh, and there are some few animals where the trial can be done uh, one of the very famous animal is called guinea pig so they do trial in them for safety and efficacy and you know genetic once that is successful then there is a phase one trial in human being that is only 30 to 50 people and that is again a safety uh, trial then the phase 2 is between 300 to 500 people at two to three different places and there is a double blind trial means half of the people will receive the vaccine or drug half of the people will not then they compare safety and efficacy whether it is a safe that means you don't want to harm somebody by giving the vaccine and secondly whether immunogenicity that means you want to get person immune to getting a particular infection in this case hiv whether that is working or not once that is successful then they go for a phase 3 trial which is a multi centric and large trial where minimum 5 to 50000 people are getting involved so in that trial if it is successful then it is rolled out and then vaccine is given to people and then do a phase 4 that is a post uh, usage uh, Uh, study whether uh, in uh, because in the study uh, which is a phase three if they did not find something but in larger use like uh, millions of people are taking are there any uh, difficulties or problem so in uh, covid at phase two level the vaccines were given a, a approval which was emergency use authorization but in hiv because that was the emergency hiv is no more an emergency and therefore it will not be at phase two level people will be getting approval because this to many of the vaccines were successful candidate vaccines but they were not given approval at phase 3 level only two vaccines reached and then they also failed so even that vaccine also did not get approval so till today not a single vaccine is authorized for human use anywhere in the world uh, as a commercial purpose or as a routine purpose so in that sense people should understand that even if today we have a very good promising vaccine hypothetically that will take minimum 5 to 10 years to develop a commercial vaccine because phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 each trial take one and a half to two year to three year and thereafter it will come to market so in covid the incubation period was small within 3 to 7 days people get infected so the phase tra- phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 can be done quickly couple of weeks couple of weeks but in hiv the incubation period is up to 90 days and therefore if you have a two group of people who are one is who is taking vaccine one has not taken vaccine both are exposed then you need to decide within one to two years three years how many of them are infected in a group and b group so that will be a little bit challenging so i do not want to give people hope about hiv vaccine but i do want to give hope to those people who are exposed to hiv that you can be still prevented from getting hiv and those people who are already infected they can still live a completely normal life because of the anti retroviral medicine and there are another small group of people which are called uh, elite controller there may be less than 5% of those who are infected with hiv their virus is controlled by themselves they don't need hiv treatment and they are called elite controller that means the viral load is undetectable despite antibody being positive 
without any antiretroviral therapy and there are uh, at least i have such 50 such patients which are called elite controller despite being hiv positive for 20 years 25 years i have not put them on hiv treatment they are still surviving without hiv treatment and with hiv virus great uh, so thank you so much dr ishwar for all your valuable insights it was lovely to be interacting with you thank you for joining us today at medical dialogues thank you Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.